Welcome and thank you for viewing this video of the Standard Response Protocol. Glendora Unified School District has adopted an emergency response protocol that is consistent throughout the entire district. This video will go over the different components of the Standard Response Protocol here at Glendora High School. You will see the SRP posters all over campus. The posters include the basic information of SRP. You've probably noticed the distinct icons. Schools across the country are adopting a standard to enhance student and staff safety during an incident or emergency. Standard response protocol is based on four actions that we can take during a critical incident. Lockout, lockdown, evacuate, and shelter. Each action is followed by a directive. There will be an announcement that follows specific language and direction when an SRP action is initiated. For lockout, the following message will be repeated. Lockout, secure the perimeter. For lockdown, the following message will be repeated. Lockdown, lock slides out of sight. For evacuate, the following message will be repeated. Evacuate to the stated location. For shelter, the following message will be repeated. Shelter for hazard using method. Every action then has specific instructions of what to do in a crisis. When these are called on the PA, the action and directive are repeated. Lock out, secure the perimeter. Lock out, secure the perimeter. There are different situations which could require the response of a lockout. There could be criminal activity in the area. There could be civil unrest in the area. There could be a dangerous animal on campus or in the area. There are many distractions on campus or in the area that could trigger the lockout response. Let's start with the student instructions on what to do in a lockout. First one is simple. If you are in a classroom, stay in the classroom. If you are outside, get in a classroom as soon as possible. Once you are in a classroom, it is business as usual. If a lockout lasts into nutrition or lunch, no one in or out. We are staying in the classroom. Same thing is true at the end of the school day. Let's look at what a teacher should do during a lockout. Bring everyone inside. If there are exterior doors in the classroom, make sure they're locked. Teachers should also verify that everyone is still in class. It's a good idea to note the time that attendance was taken. If you have students in your class that are not yours, please email attendance the names of those students. Almost always, it's business as usual, in the building. Lock down, locks, lights, out of sight. Lock down, locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown is used when there is a threat on campus or there is some type of threat to students and staff. Let's look at what the students should do. If you are inside, stay out of sight from the corridor window. A locked door is a proven time barrier. In active violence events, rarely, if ever, has someone been hurt who is behind a locked classroom door. Be absolutely silent. Turn your phone off in the initial stages of a lockdown. If there is an actual lockdown, you'll get a chance to text your parents. Do not open the door for anyone. Administrators or law enforcement will unlock the door and release the room. We don't know if someone in the hall is being held captive. Let's look at what teachers should do in a lockdown. When you hear lockdown locks lights out of sight, focus on getting the door locked and closed as quickly as possible. A locked classroom door is a proven lifesaver. Make sure to have students move away from the windows. Turn out the lights. The goal is to get out of sight behind a locked door as quickly as possible. Leave the corridor window uncovered. Law enforcement needs to see into the room from the hallway. Be silent and maintain student silence. Turn off your phone. A lockdown cannot be ended with a PA announcement. It only ends with administration or police opening the door and releasing the room. If you can, take attendance. Note if you have missing students or extra students swept from the hall. Note the time. You probably won't need to do anything with the roster at this point, but we're creating a chain of custody and this will be useful over the life cycle of the event. What if you're outside? If you're outside and a lockdown is called, do not go back and try to get into a classroom. The doors should be all locked. Get off campus as soon as possible and get as far from campus as possible. Do not go to your cars to drive. 
It is much quicker and easier to get off campus on foot. When leaving campus, leave in the opposite direction of the threat. You can go home or meet at one of our reunification locations. We have three reunification centers. If you exit to the west, go to Williams Education Center. If you exit to the north, go to Sellers Elementary School. And if you exit to the east or the south, go to Sutherland Elementary School. If the fire alarm sounds, stay in the classroom unless you see fire or if smoke is filling your classroom. If you must evacuate due to fire or smoke, the hallway may not be your best option. Consider using an alternate door, window, or any other exterior exit. Can we text our parents? In the time immediately after a lockdown is called, remain silent and silence your phone. As the event evolves, you'll be given an opportunity to text your parents. Evacuate. Evacuate is how to move students in an orderly fashion from point A to point B. A fire drill is really evacuate out of the building. With the SRP, evacuate is always followed by a location. For instance, evacuate to the gym, evacuate to the gym. So here's what students do. Usually, you leave your belongings behind. Be sure to listen for any new directions. Teachers, there may be cases where you lead students. There may be cases where you follow students out. In a police-led evacuation, you'll probably be asked to lead the students out. Teachers at the evacuation area take attendance and note the time. During an active violence event, another option is to self-evacuate. If your phone is in your pocket, bring it. If it is in your purse or backpack, you may not be given the opportunity to grab it. All of that goes for teachers as well. There may be circumstances where you can't bring your purse, briefcase, or backpack. Try to bring your keys and wallet. Also, grab the attendance sheet and your emergency packet and your phone. At the evacuation assembly area, take attendance and send the pink attendance sheet to the command post. For shelter, you will hear the PA announce shelter for the specific hazard and what safety strategy to use. So what's a hazard? Something dangerous. It could be environmental, like a tornado or earthquake. It might be something like a chemical spill nearby. Your safety strategy is what you do in response to the hazard. Public address might be just the hazard and safety strategy. Or it could be shelter for the stated hazard using the stated safety strategy. In either case, it will be repeated. For example, tornado, get to the storm shelter. Tornado, get to the storm shelter. For an earthquake, the safety strategy is drop, cover, and hold. For hazmat risk, we would seal the room by taping plastic around doors, vents, and windows. Listen for instructions. The situation may be very dynamic. During a shelter event, teachers should try to take attendance and note the time. This has been an introduction of the standard response protocol, which has been adopted by Glendora High School and the rest of the Glendora Unified School District. Please review this information through discussion, re-watching of this video, and reviewing the posters throughout campus. Thank you very much for watching the standard response protocol video. There is a lot of important information and direction that we all must learn and follow. While we have adopted this protocol, every situation is unique. With that being said, we all must learn to be good decision makers in emergency situations. The more prepared we are, the safer we will be.